Let's take a look at some Linux basics. We're going to talk about scheduling jobs using the at command and with the cron service. As always, when working with Linux systems, your experiences may differ from mine depending on which distribution you're using. That's normal, it's Linux. Make sure you check your man pages and your documentation if anything doesn't work the way you expect it to or the way I've outlined. Let's jump right in and start with at command. The at command is used to schedule commands that you're going to execute once at a particular time in the future. We'll look at some command syntax and we'll talk about the time specs that you have to give the command when you run it. When we do talk about the at command, it's really a set of three commands that work together. We have at, at q, atq, and at rm, or at remove. The at command is what you use to schedule your command. At q is how you view what commands have already been scheduled, and at rm will allow you to remove any commands that have already been scheduled. When you want to schedule a command, this is the syntax you'll use. There are two sets. The conventional set of syntax is first you specify the at command and give it the time spec. Once you do that, you'll be prompted to enter the command or the commands that you would like to schedule. When you're done with that, you do control D, that's with the caret D, control D to end your input. You can also condense this onto one line if you'd prefer. To do that, you do echo the command, and then you pipe it into the at command with the given time spec. Now let's look at a couple examples of how we might use these. If we have the script a slash opt slash purge cache dot sh, and we would like to run that at 11.45 p.m., if we wanted to do that using the conventional syntax, it would look kind of like this. We would type in at 11.45 p.m. It would then drop us into the at command input area. We would type in the name of the script, opt purge cache. EOT will show up on the screen when we press control D, and that means end of text, and the command will be scheduled. If we want to condense that onto one line, it would look something like this, where we echo opt purge cache.sh, pipe that into the at command with 11.45 p.m. time spec specified. Now when we work with the at command, we have to give it the time spec. We need to know what type of time specs the command will accept so we can enter our syntax properly. Hour, hour, minute, minute is the most common simple time spec we can give it. One thing to note about this, if the time has already passed, it will assume tomorrow. Optionally, you can give it an AM or PM to specify AM or PM, not just the next bit of that time. So for example, if we said 632, it would run at the next 632, which may be 632 PM. Or we can specify directly 632 PM. Well, if it's already 6.45 p.m., this isn't going to run until 6.32 p.m. tomorrow. Or we could specify the time in a 24-hour format, such as 18.32. We could also say midnight or noon or tea time, which happens to be 4 p.m. We can specify month day by spelling out the month, giving it the day, or we can group it together, M-M-D-D-Y-Y, or we can put slashes in between it. We can also use the term now plus a count of time units, and those time units can be minutes or hours, days or weeks. An example of this would be now plus 10 minutes, we'll have this command run in 10 minutes, or now plus one day, we'll have it run at this time tomorrow. We can also use the today and tomorrow modifiers, such as 6.32 today or 6.32 p.m. tomorrow to specify our time spec. Read the manual page because I've just covered the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the at time spec commands. There are so many listed there. Once we've scheduled a command, we might want to know how to view that the command is scheduled or remove it if we've improperly scheduled it. And we can view those commands simply by typing at Q, ATQ. That will display a list of our scheduled commands along with an ID number for each one. We can remove scheduled commands using the at RM. We give it the Q number or multiple Q numbers that we want to remove. For instance, at RM1 will remove the first item in the queue. At RM274 will remove the second, the seventh, and the fourth. They don't have to be in numerical order. They can be, it doesn't matter. And if you want to look into the syntax a bit more or see some more examples, these are two great resources I highly recommend giving a read. Now that we've talked about the at command, let's look at the cron tab service. It's simply a time-based job scheduler which will allow you to run a command based on a schedule you've specified. We'll look at some common uses, how to use cron, and a couple helper tools to make your configuration easier. Cron is extremely versatile and has any number of uses anytime you need to have something scheduled. Many of the common uses revolve around backups uh, or data updates, cleaning system caches, reporting, and system maintenance tasks. One of the easiest ways to get started using the cron service is with its special directories. These exist that allow you to run jobs at regular predefined intervals. These special directories live under Etsy as cron hourly, cron.daily, cron.weekly, and cron.monthly. 
just as you would assume by their names, they run the jobs either hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly at the top of each one of their respective time units. So hourly is going to run at the top of every hour. Daily will run at midnight every day. Weekly jobs will run midnight on Sunday morning. And monthly jobs will run at midnight on the first of every month. A couple of notes with these special directories is every job is going to run as root. And you can either store the script in the directory directly or you can reference it using a symlink, which is the preferred method. So the scripts aren't stored in the Etsy directory. They're just linked to from the Etsy directory. To get more advanced with cron, you're going to have to use the configuration files and learn the syntax associated with those files. Cron schedules are stored in specific configuration files, depending on your scope. Each user has their own configuration file, or there's a system-wide configuration file you can use. These configuration files are stored in Etsy cron tab, this is the location of the system-wide configuration file. And one note about this file is you have to specify which user each command is going to run as. This file is generally modified by hand using your text editor of choice. Each user configuration is stored within the var spool cron directory. Generally, you'll use the cron tab command to interact with these files. You won't edit them by hand. Let's take a look at the syntax for the cron tab command. To view or list your current cron tab configuration, you'll use cron tab L. If you want to edit the configuration, it's crontab-e, which will open a text editor on the command line. You can remove your crontab configuration using crontab-r. Now, be very careful with this, because once you run crontab-r, it will not ask you for confirmation, and it will not make a backup. And if you look at your keyboard, look how close the R and the E keys are to each other. So definitely be sure you know what command you're entering before you hit that Enter key. You can also modify the crontab configuration of another user. You have to be root to do so. And you can use the dash L, the E, or the R to list, edit, or remove the cron tabs. All you do is add a dash U and specify the name of the user. Now we know where the configuration files are and how to interact with them. But what syntax do we need to specify within those files in order to create a successful cron entry? When we're working with the user configuration file, it's going to look structured similar to this. It'll have comments in it, and we can specify those using the pound sign. We'll give it the schedule, and we'll follow the schedule with a command. We'll look at what schedule syntax we need to give it here shortly. When we talk about the system configuration file, it's very similar. The only difference is we have to specify the user in between the schedule and the command. OK, now here's where we're going to get a little bit complicated when we talk about the schedule syntax. If you haven't seen it before, it can be a little bit daunting. But don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. Cron uses special notation of five positions to specify the frequency of every job that it's going to run. Within these five positions, you can schedule a job to run at any specific minute throughout the year. And these five positions are minute, hour, day, month, and weekday. What we can enter into these fields is 0 through 60 for the minute, 0 through 23 for the hour, 1 through 31 for the day, 1 through 12 for the month, and 0 through 7 for Sunday to Sunday where one would be Monday, two would be Tuesday, three is Wednesday, so on and so forth, all the way through seven being Sunday again. For a valid schedule, you have to be sure to use each one of the five positions in every schedule that you create. In addition to the basic schedule syntax, we can also enter special characters, which will allow us more fine tuning of the schedule that we want to set. We have sets of common special characters that can be used within those five schedule positions. These are the asterisk, the comma, the hyphen, and the asterisk with a forward slash for a fraction. These allow us to run commands at every one of that time period, or we can specify a list in that time period. We can specify a range, or we can use a fractional amount. We also have special notation that we can use in place of the specific schedules. These are very similar to the directories we talked about earlier with the hourly, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the yearly. In addition, we have the ability to specify at reboot. There are a couple rules to keep in mind when working with schedules. When working with the basic schedules, you must be sure to have all five positions filled, and they have to be separated by white space. When you're using the at style special notation, this replaces all five positions and must be used exclusively. You can't use this inside of one of the five positions. You use this instead of the five positions entirely. Let's see if we can make some sense of this with some example schedules. Let's assume we have a command we'd like to run at the top of every hour. An example of how we could schedule that would be like this, where we specify the zero minute of every hour, of every day, of every month, of every weekday. And then we give it the command we want to run. The reason we have a zero in this first column is because we want it to run at the top of every hour. If this was an asterisk as well, it would run every minute of every hour. 
So we specify the zero to make sure that we're only running at the top of the hour. Let's say we had an hourly script we wanted to run at every hour except for 3 a.m. How we might do that would be similar to this, where we're specifying every minute. We're going to say from midnight through 2 a.m. We're going to add a comma. And then from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m., 23, of every day, of every month, of every weekday. Here we're specifying a range of lists, where we have a range of 0 through 2 a.m., so midnight to 2 a.m. The comma specifies a list, and we have another range from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. So this will cover every hour of the day except for 3 a.m. If we wanted something to only run at 11 p.m. nightly, an example of that would be, again, we've got 0 for the top of the hour, 23 for 11 p.m. of every day, of every month, of every weekday, and then we specify the command we want to run. Pretty straightforward. Moving on from that, we've got 4.45 a.m. on Sunday of each week, and this will look very similar. Again, 45 is the minute, 4 is the hour, every day, of every month. This time we're going to specify a weekday, and that weekday is going to be 0, which is Sunday. This could also be 7, but I generally ignore 7 and use 0 through 6. Cron assumes anything after the schedule is part of the command, so this could be extremely long, and it will consider it all to be part of the original command once the schedule is specified. Let's look at a few more example schedules. We have one for 4.15 a.m. on the first of each month, and that's going to look like this, where we're specifying the 15th minute, 4 a.m. Now this time we're specifying the first of each month, of every month, of every day of the week. So it doesn't matter what day of the week or month, it just has to be the first of that month and 4.15 a.m. Now I have a command I'd like to run every 15 minutes, but I'm going to offset that because I potentially have a lot of commands that run at the top of every hour or at the half of every hour. So I'm specifying the 5th minute, 20th minute, 35th minute, and 50th minute of the hour. It's going to run a command that does a map generation in this case. And this is of every hour, of every day, of every month, of every weekday. I've just offset it by 5 minutes. And finally, I'm a user that doesn't have root privileges, but I have a server application I'd like to run every time the system boots up. To do that, I'm going to specify it using at reboot. So just like the at hourly or at daily or at weeklies, in this case, I'm specifying at reboot. And this is the command I want it to run when the server boots up. I have a sleep command in this script so that it does delay a little bit, allowing other services on the system to settle before attempting to start my service. We'll wrap up our talk with Cron and look into a couple helper tools. As always, there are some graphical and some other helper tools that exist to aid with our schedule creation. Just because we're administrators doesn't mean we don't like things to be simple. A couple common graphical applications are GNOME Schedule, which works with the GNOME Display Manager, and Webmin, which is a web UI configuration utility. It doesn't matter what display manager you're running. If you're working with the configuration files directly, there's an online configuration tool which will help you generate configuration syntax, and that's corntab.com. No, that's not a typo. It is corntab to generate your crontab configuration. We'll take a quick look at user control and we'll get wrapped up. Both the at commands and the crontab services have the option to control user access using either a blacklist, whitelist, or by restricting it to root only. If you'd like to blacklist users, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is add their username to the respective .deny file. For at, that's etc.deny, and cron, that's etc.cron.deny. In these files, you list a single username per line, which will deny the access those users have to those respective services. Generally, this file exists and is blank by default. Whitelisting users is very similar. You simply add their username to the .allow file of the respective service. At is etc at dot allow, and cron is etc cron dot allow. Now note, once you create the whitelist file, the .allow file, you're generally going to set the system to ignore the .deny configuration. This means once that allow file exists, it does not matter what's in that deny file. Only the users in the allow file will be allowed. And just as the deny file, you'll list a single username per line. And if you'd like to restrict it to root access only, you can do that by removing both the .allow and the deny files. For at, you would remove etc at dot allow and etc at dot deny. And with cron, you would remove etc cron dot allow and etc cron dot deny. Now this is the default functionality on most Linux systems. However, some differ. Ubuntu is one of those that does not follow this behavior. When you delete both of those files, it does default to all access. So if you would like to restrict it to root only, just create an at allow or a cron.allow with the root username in it only. 
This has been a quick look at some Linux basics around scheduling jobs using the at command and with the cron service. I hope you were able to learn something today. My name is Brandon Camucci. Happy configuring.